Chapter 25, Sheila the Magnificent Finally, Michael made it to a room that was soundproof from the looks of it. It was the offices of Big Dick. Inside, Michael entered to see Big Dick himself sitting all the way to the left. He was feeding his Doberman slabs of raw meat, and next to Dick was a TV, an fancily designed, broke-looking high chow, buttoned up for the Duke of Earl. Then Michael noticed that Betamax was on the screen, and before he could whip his head around to seek out Max in person, TV Beta smiled and then spoke. Michael, how are you doing there, old chum? And now it looked like Elvis had finally left the building. <coughs> Michael twitched once and then allowed himself to take in the shit he was seeing. As Michael glazed at the TV and frowned in disbelief, Betamax glazed back and winked a bit. Michael began to remember how he used to have nightmares as a child of moments like these. How he'd lay around watching Howdy Doody and nearly piss himself when imagining the screen zooming in with, with a close-up of, of that evil-looking puppet chattering its splintered wooden teeth at Michael incessantly as if excited by the thought of how Michael's skin might taste like. Betamax, what the fuck are you doing on TV, huh? What is this? Why is Big Dick sitting there at the corner not saying a word, feeding his dogs, and... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why, why is there a giant naked woman bench-pressing what looks to be a half a metric ton? <coughs> yeah, Michael just noticed her, too. She was all the way to the right of him next to a window. Outside, a neon sign was shining in the color of pink orgasm onto the glistening bulk of her Herculean body as she heaved what looked like two walruses attached to a stick, and every time she heaved, her bulk would then blow up like balloons, making Michael skittish of the thought of seeing them burst. And then Michael got really scared, as she began moaning and grunting, sounding like the mating calls of a chainsaw, which must have also sorrowed the shit out of those poor walruses, as they shuffled and scrambled about trying to break away from the bar free. And as she climaxed, she bellowed out one last everlasting moan that shattered a sound barrier and had the 80s gods running for their cigarettes. And then all of a sudden, the Colossus got up. She was simply gigantic, just so big. She dwarfed everything in the room and then some, looking like she could make every muscle-bound maniac male at that joint her bitch. About that moment, Michael felt like he was probably... Never been more terrified in his entire life. And what terrified him the most was how cute she was, at least in the face. Oh no, she even has a perfect diamond window. No, I don't want that. Michael, Michael, talk to me. Michael, don't worry about Sheila over there. She is such a sweetheart of a girl once you get to know her. Don't let her um girth make you feel... She's really a doll, I tell you, responded Max with a look of concern on his face. The towering Barbarella looked at Michael and smiled, and Michael smiled back and had to admit she did have this certain Doris Day glow about her, that is if Doris Day was an overgrown mutant. Big Dick continues feeding his dogs, not saying a word to Michael, he hadn't even looked at Michael once. He continues feeding his babies, all alone in a world of his own, whispering something gently to his pups, like a mother does to a newborn child. Hey Michael. I heard what happened at Stumpy's place, and some of the boys here aren't too happy with you, and to say the least. I had to have a good powwow with them, and that you're an old friend of mine, and I didn't want them to, well, as they would put it, introduce you to the club, explained Max as he winked again. What is that show about that reporter that's a ghost stuck on TV? As Betamax smiled all girly like Doris Day with her chipmunk face continued standing there like a mountain, proud and strong, and she seemed like she was starting to come on to Michael, which to Michael's distaste began to turn him on. No, no, fuck no, not happening, thought Michael, trying to avoid any sexual images of how she would be like from entering his mind and how it would, it would be like to have this towering Barbarella here decide to make him her bitch. Ah, shit, thought Michael as it was then too late to repress all the images and smells and sounds from taking shape. Oh, no. Hey, Michael, you okay? Asked Max, seeing as to how Michael was shivering again, staring up at the giant Aphrodite. So you're going to help me? Why would you do that, Max? Asked Michael. I told you, you've always been a good friend to me. Such a Greek tragedy. What happened that night when Mary's building had caught on fire? You didn't deserve going to prison after all that. And for what? A couple of... I remember the story, Max. I was there. And it's not exactly a memory I want to dwell in right now. 
explained Michael, while trying to fight off with a stick, the image of Doris Day there, trying to bend him over and introduce him to her club. Of course, of course, Michael, I understand completely, responded Max. So where are you right now, and how are we going to do this, asked Michael, as he kept reminding himself how stupid it was for him to be talking to a TV. I'm here in Manhattan. Radboy's actually here, too. Not here, here, around. Where in Manhattan? 1999. I think you know the place, concluded Max as he signed off. Betamax's broadcast was over, was off the air now, and static was now the only thing left. Doris Day then made a quick kissy face at Michael. Michael cringed at first up a bit at the thought, but then began to feel different, and then got kind of curious as Sheila began licking her lips at him. And then Michael thought, well, why not? <laughs> I guess it's kind of like this. How often has a mortal male gotten the chance to woo a Greek goddess with his boyish charms and then gotten the chance to do the nasty with her? So maybe if I come back around here again. Yup. <laughs> Damn, she's big.